you know Jimmy Cliff's hit song, I can see clearly. Okay. Or Barry Hammond's putting up a resistance. Then you definitely need to know the legendary music producer, composer, arranger, and so much more behind all these hits and many more. The legendary trailblazer, Clive Hunt. The greatness lies within you. You can mount any <laughs> really? Yes. Clive Hunt is Jamaican yes. Quincy Jones. With over five decades in the music industry, the musical legacy and genius of Clive Hunt is widely known throughout the sector for his talent, skill, and expertise. He has worked with the majority of the top tier and continues to be sought after until today. I ventured to where he spends most of his time, the music studio, to learn more. So I'm here with the legendary Clive Hunt. Clive, mm. yes. <laughs> well, I consider you to be a legend and so many others consider you to be a legend in the music industry. Tell us mm. about some of the top artists that you've worked with from your career began till now. Basically, as my first official recording session was with um, Launa Bennett. Um, as I said, uh, that, was, that was when I was a year, very young man. And uh, but I've, I've never met her. And she had never met me. See her right here. She she know me. Maybe since nowadays everything is so visual, maybe she recognized me. I'm not sure. But anyway, she was the first person I worked with, and at the time she had a number one song in England, which is Top of the Pops, which is a big thing in music business globally. So um, since that, immediately after I started working like Dennis Brown, Derek Harriet, these were very famous people in their time. And it's around Derek, I chose a few. Um, there was a band named Inner Circle, which broke up after a little while, around them time, to Inner to Third World and Inner Circle, still around. Um, since then, I've done so many work. I've worked with, basically, you know what I used to say? I used to have a thing to say, name who I haven't worked with. You know what I mean? But I can't, which, and this is since maybe the dancehall era when uh, a lot of young people come out of this, you know, from the different places and start doing something at the studio. Um, but if you want some famous names, I can tell you, Barry Salmon, I can say Jimmy Cliff, I can say Alpha Blondie, I can say Betty Wright, I can say Bobby Caldwell, what you want to do for love. I can say, um, oh, name them. I can say Toots and the Meters. I can say Chaka Khan. That's these are, and in, back in Jamaica, again, I could say just about anybody, you know. I work with, I, produ I produced the Scatterlight's last album in Jamaica. I was up early 20s. The Scatterlight is as famous as most of these people I mentioned. Okay, um, I've worked with Maxi Priest, worked with, um, these are it makers. I've worked with, and then how oh, I consider famous people, I you see musicians and producers, like there's a man named Andel Tucker. Every time I mention his name to important people, they don't know him. And I'm like, what? And they took a produce. He, he, the Fugees, he brought them to the to people. He was the, the first album with Andel Tucker. Yeah, and he, they were in Jamaica here record recording at Anchor. And um, he did Diana King. He brought produce Diana King. He brought Supercat to his biggest, his biggest hit record. Um, girls Town, Girls All Around. So, um, so my, my thing with fame, I like to talk about some of the people I'm we don't see and hear about too much. They're, to me, they're just as famous. Because the famous people, they talk about them and I can't, couldn't have done without them. You know what I'm saying? But anyway, make, on this topic, we, we could go on and on and on. Trust me, because I've been doing it so long. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And speaking of doing it so long, tell me how you started in the industry. In the industry, I was a musician and mm -hmm. from I was 13. And the army heard about me from when I was 14 and they started to visit me. And my teacher was, I just left the army. And he, is, he was a pretty famous man in that circle around that time. And he introduced me to them and they kind of adapted me like, you know, from a little distance. And um, they, the plan was for me to, to be a soldier, a, a musician in the army. Anyway, the, the army, ever, I think about age, so you're supposed to join the army, become a soldier when you're 18. Mm -hmm. And um, when I was 17, the police, 16, 17, the police force wanted me to be a musician in, in the, the police band 
anyway, <laughs> the, the man who was a director for the army didn't like that. Anyway, I went and did the police test because I still had to wait till I reached 18. So the, um, and this, the, I passed the test and I was about to go to Port Royal, which was the training place of police at that time. And the, the guy, the, main, the band director in the army heard about that and just sent for me and just sent me straight to Newcastle. I mean, so I became a soldier, underage, okay? And then I left the army, the new, new training. I went to the, back into camp and I be, same day they gave me uniform and I was, um, I started to play with the band. I didn't even remember how my, my lips and all of that. I played the trumpet then mainly. Anyway, um, uh, less than a year later, they sent me to England to the Royal Military School of Music, which is a college for top military pe um, people, musicians in the British Empire. Anyway, I went there less than a year after I became a soldier, which was very different. Because normally you have to spend five years in the army before you do that. And I went there and did very well. Um, in retrospect, I wish I'd take use of the opportunity. Yeah, I went there and I didn't even respect people too much because I wasn't misbehaving, but they, I found out mm, that my teacher was, was, didn't even understand half that I know. If I put something, they know what it means. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Serious. So, so, you, so you were um, a musician in the army then? You, were never, oh, you never go out and fight and all of that? No, 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 no. But I was trained like that because I was in the... The, not, there's a military band, Jamaica military band. Mm -hmm. They are reserved so soldiers, but the, even though the band live, so they don't concentrate on fighting. Mm -hmm. But I've joined the one, first battalion, of, first battalion of the Jamaica regiment, mm -hmm. which is a fighting thing. So mm -hmm. that's why they had to send me a fight, had to train to fight as any soldier. And mm -hmm. they had, at times they call upon us. Mm -hmm. Fortunately, because I was I was quite good at what I do, so they never really called me to do that. Once they make me do a guard duty. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I, I went into a truck, you know, and the military truck, military truck and, and, and hide with a gun and the bullets. And, you hide? And fell asleep till morning. <laughs> <laughs> and they said, don't ever put that man back there. So that, was, <laughs> that was it. Yeah. I don't prefer to fight more than stop, stop one place. That's up for two hours. <laughs> oh, boy. So when now you started working with um, Byron Lee and the Dragoneers? The Dragoneers. Mm -hmm. That was much of time. You know, I read a lot. I read a lot of things about me, and um, some of them is the people never consulted me, That's especially what's on Wikipedia. Oh. I, I, I became a member of Byron Lee after I was well established in the industry. Everybody knew me. Everybody. Oh, really? It was the chronology then? <laughs> no, before I went to England, when I left, uh, when I just become a soldier and was playing with the in the 1GR band, um, there were a few bands around which needed musicians and especially horn players. People play horns and adapt different instruments apart from guitar and so on. So the first, I was approached by a guy named Bonnie Brown. He was a lead singer, or one of the lead singers for a famous group at that time called The Chosen Few. Good, good singers. And Bonnie um, came to the camp he, and uh, he, fact, he was the one who introduced me to my first recording session. He recommended me. Okay. But anyway, Bonnie came to camp and told me that there was a band named The Falcons, The Mighty Falcons. And in the my so can catch a park road around here. And when I went there to play, Dennis Brown was in the band, he was the lead singer. And there were some good musicians, including uh, one or two ex soldiers. So they kinda adapted me. Anyway, I think I worked with them for a short time because then Bonnie Brown asked me to play, play with another band named Els Angels, which had like Wayne Harmon with, with Chalice, you know, Wayne Harmon, you know, Chris Harmon, Wayne Harmon, Chris was Wayne's little brother. And um a few musicians were like uh Richie Boo who plays Bass in third world, he was a guitarist in that band. And a guy named Courtney Robbins, which is Byron Lee, main bass player. He left the band to do that. Anyway, I was with that band then. The, the opportunity came for me to go to, do, go to England. And they, um, I was playing with them you know, at various clubs in, around Kingston, and all over, until that uh, time came. When, when I went to England and came back, um, I joined that band again. They called for me, I played with them. And then, um, then I was asked to do the, the recording session. And then uh, everybody started coming from my first session, you know, because I was like a problem solver. I knew music. I studied music. Most people who play music in Jamaica, popular, great, rich musicians, they just pick up an instrument and learn a few things and they mm -hmm. evolve. But I studied music. I was a classical musician. Mm -hmm. you know I mean, so I kind of had a wide knowledge. So when I went into my reggae session, as a little youth, I had more knowledge. And everybody, in fact, when I was a little boy in Linstead, like this, I would sit out of my grandmother's house and watch, you know, on the theater outside, my friends watching, 
big artists, Jimmy Cliff, Dead Roy Wilson, the Scatterlight, so on and so on, uh, performing. And um, a few years later, now, I was working with them in the studio. But one thing I noticed ab about them, I get full respect from them when they see saw me. Because everybody thought about the little youth, the little soldier youth. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because I was like that sort of a little problem. I could solve little problems. Mm -hmm. I never, I never, I never buck up any major problems in the music, you know, in a oh. reggae music. Speaking of, you never encountered any, cha well, any challenges in no. reggae music. What Not about this? What has been the biggest challenge for you in terms of your career in the industry then? <laughs> Ah, uh, well, the biggest thing, you know, I tell you, when I was in the army at that age, I, I don't know if I should be talking this in this medium. I mean, they're writing a Clive Hunt book, you know, and the writer has been writing for two years now. You know what I'm saying? So, I want to take, keep things a little short. Like, mm -hmm. I, I spent, I was quiet old boy, real old boy. I gave trouble. But I don't talk. I don't quarrel. I just do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, man. Um, um, and <laughs> I get in trouble for that a lot. Mm -hmm. And in the army, I had a follow to the army just after I started doing my first reg reggae recording session. Mm -hmm. And I just leave camp whenever I feel like. And I, I got in trouble, big trouble with them a few times over that. Mm -hmm. And I, I stayed under the shadows. They see me now talking. Mm -hmm. 30 years ago, you'd never get me to do this. 20 years ago, you'd never do this. I mm -hmm. wish I could. I stay behind. Mm -hmm. So and I, I did a lot of recordings too, which I make other people put their name on it, just to big them up. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Get them up, push them in the business. Yeah. So, so my, base, my, my challenge was basically to, to um, still the problem me in the army, mm -hmm. I mean, and to survive. Mm -hmm. And I, even I fly all over the world, you know, under that same status. Mm -hmm. I mean, so I'm always in the shadows and moving like this and that. Mm -hmm. So it was a, a big challenge for me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the challenge, and um, it's actually since I'm in this senior position, you know, gray year and all of that now, mm -hmm. and he just started thinking, say, damn, I could have been rich, you know. Mm -hmm. I was never thinking about that. Because my music teacher never teach me that since I was so good. He never one day said to me, Clive, you're going to get me, make a lot of money. So this is what you should do with money. And you know something, I, 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 I've been telling other musicians, because I work with the best musicians all the time, young musicians, and I tell them that, rude boy. I notice all of them, they, they're very, they, about the money, they're very serious, you know. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But I tell them, say, um, no musician, group of musicians own anything in Jamaica, more than just stuff with them and their family. You know that? I, I tell musicians, say, you could own a plaza, you know. You could own a plaza in half a tree. Or you could build one up like an E. And they say, yeah, some can laugh. And then two, three years later, when they say how much money you pass through the thing, I say, oh boy, you know, say, remember, remember, I tell somebody else and they do it, and I go like, boy, okay. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. No, and my, that's, that's, a, that's a major challenge for me now. Mm -hmm. Because um, I have to still be working as hard as when I was 19 mm -hmm. or 20. So it's, it's really, and it's no one's fault. I was just stupid enough. I, I was only smart musically. Mm -hmm. Nothing else. What did you say you were stupid then? Because it's, so. it's, it's, just, it's just knowledge. It's like at the time. Because no, now you know better, yeah. you do it better. Oh, yeah. yeah. So I, I wouldn't call you stupid. No, no, no. I believe you wouldn't. But I, I, I feel like, oh. And then I, I, have, I have a kind of. I love to teach and share knowledge. That's what I do. I, I, that's what I get the most out of daily and mm -hmm. every time in my life. And, and I see a lot of young people who are in the business mm -hmm. and some successful ones. Mm -hmm. And you know, something them father or them auntie or somebody carry them to me. Mm -hmm. Or I see them in the studio sweeping out and I say, come on, come on, come on. I want privacy, I do crazy things. Mm -hmm. And if you are not in the business, I don't want you to see me. Mm -hmm. And a few of them become, they say they want to stay and they learn. But you know something, I never hear they call my name. You can call some famous names and I tell you, Wow. When he come in and he was a little boy, he just said some mess. And then somebody said, what am I tell you? I said, no, no, no. Yeah, leave him alone. I said, do that. Do that. Do that. Six months later, enough for them, you know. Mm -hmm. Famous, famous ones. I won't say no more. I, I, I always want to say that. Mm -hmm. Many of the richest and famous ones, I teach them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, man. Mm -hmm. And I, some of them, I give them all bus fare and lunch money for one year. Mm -hmm. I carry all money in a studio. And the studio said, and they say, who is he? I say it's a new assistant. I say we don't, we don't iron. I say they're not working for you. But you I'm working in that studio. Every time I go, they work. Mm -hmm. And after all, they stay there, and some of them is still there right now. Mm -hmm. But you, you're not, very few here, maybe one or two, you can hear talk, you know. Mm -hmm. And I hear, like, I hear a famous producer, musician, artist in Jamaica was telling his story to 
-hmm. some young musicians and players. And mm -hmm. I, I remember Barry Salmon was standing right there. And he might talk about himself and thing. And, and Barry and I was standing on the side, and the guys they were sitting beside him. And we talk, talk. And Barry was standing right there. And see, Barry's keeper look on it. Barry's look for me like so. And him look. Him, then him just look back and he, come here, look on Barry and he might tell the guy talk, you know. The man, him mm -hmm. famous. Yeah, all owner respect him. And then Barry's, every time Barry's look on him, Barry says, Because so. I'm cut him out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then I talk, 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 you know. I'm going to take it serious. But Barry's vexed, you know. Barry's also. Oh, and, and if, if people ever know, it's me bringing me there by man. Wow. Mm. Yeah, into the DM, rich and famous. So how there does them. what does that do to you? Like how does it cause you know make you feel the fact that you've helped so many but not everybody recognizes? That's okay. I'm not really looking in for that, for them to go out and talk in newspaper and tea. But my, my guy, not even one time. Yeah, then say, Well, it's Clive on. Yeah, one or two, you know, we say, you know, you know, in the beginning, here's a man in Clive on and walk me in the studio or something. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, but I will call there whoever whoever have helped me along the way. Anyone who knows me knows if I don't call them, I remember me can't remember. Mm -hmm. And I can't talk about so much of them. There's a whole lot of people who help me. Nowadays the focus is on um mm -hmm. is um money, money, money. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Everybody wants a house on the hill and five cars. Mm -hmm. Good, that's cool. Mm -hmm. But um some musicians, I, I told some musicians were not working, mm -hmm. when they, they're good enough, they're not getting any work. And I said to me, say, oh, you do it? I said, tell you what, I just get to longer work all the time. Anyway. If a man call me, if the thing sound foolish, mm -hmm. and I can't shape it to make it sound good, I won't go. But when people call me, I go. You know what I mean? And I, most I would ask for is my expense to go back and forth, mm -hmm. and, and buy, I can buy a drink and have a meal. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And, and uh, I do that all the time. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And I tell him if you do that because credit in our business, that's why I mean one of the things I, I talk about people who I have helped along the way and stuff. People as I say many, many more help me now, but credit in, in music business is still more important than cash. Yes. No, that's how I get work. Mm -hmm. I can tell you some of the biggest records I've ever worked on I never get paid for it. Wow. Never ever. But I work on it and I was going through a lot of personal changes, you know, at that time. And then I was at somewhere re 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 recovering, or, you know, myself, like, you know, in a rehab. Mm -hmm. And then the song was the biggest reggae song in the world. Do you know what if you're a little beer, right? And then somebody just went on the TV one day when the place I was, everybody had one TV and watched one TV together. Mm -hmm. And somebody said, oh, the music there, man said, oh, it's Clive. And I said, they, they were on the TV, said, Clive, man? Yeah, what happened to him? And the man said, oh, him, there's somewhere to take care of himself, man. I said, I thought he made. And when I leave that place, Immediately, I get so much work. Yeah, it's, it's crazy. I, the day they told me to leave, the night, they just told me to leave the place. I had to go. Mm -hmm. So I said, what happened? They said I did something wrong. Mm -hmm. it, it's, well, there are men and women in there, but you're not supposed to have no special relationship with nobody. You know, mm -hmm. every, if you have a friend, everybody's a friend. Or you have no friend. Mm -hmm. It's like that. Anyway, a young lady washed her shirt for me because she said, a shirt of mine put on when I was sleeping, you know, mm -hmm. and she washed it. And then I was there early in the evening, a guy that said, I want to meet him. I want to meet him. I'm, I'm upset. And they say, okay. So the doctors and nurses, everybody came and said, what's the problem? And him just sit down and say, she washed Clive sh on shirt this morning. Mm -hmm. and, and, and I said, what? And, and, and Mr. Show and I said, you wash my shirt? Why you do that? And, and the guy, the, the, so the, the, the director, Mr. Psychiatrist, psychiatrist, it's a good friend of mine. He said, um, you, did you do that? And she says, and he said, Clive, I said, him come here, Zul. So Azul, I said, no, no, I never know. And I said, well, the guy was very upset. And the guy is a musician's son, you know, famous musician's son. He must say, I can't, he has to leave. And I told him, told him to leave in the evening, like six o'clock. Wow. And I didn't have a dollar, nothing at all. I was on, in, on the lamb, I was living in the street. And, mm -hmm. and I walked from that place to Alfred Tree, where no berries is, and we used to hang out with them friends. We go there, and we go in and stand up. Mr. Paris I play a game and something behind him. And he would have the money one place I get away. And Barry said, Oh, I'll go on. And then he turned and said, Mr. Jesus, Clive, why are you doing that? Why are you doing that? So I said, Them much people say, Philippe. So, what you do? I said, I don't do nothing. He said, People say, Philippe. So, what you do? I said, I want to go for milk bag and go country. And we give him a van key. First SUV I ever drive. First one I think I ever seen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, except in the movies. And I just drive, go back up the place, go make a scandal bag and drive back to him. And he said, So, what now? I said, Pay a taxi for Carmichael Lindsay, about $2,000 at my mother's house. And him say, For what? 
I said, may I go? I don't want him. He said, no, everybody want you for work. I said, no, I don't want to work. I didn't think I was together yet mentally. Mm. And he said, sis. I said, Beres, man. He said, can I come to my house? I go to my house and stay for two weeks. But I drive my own car going home after the two weeks, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. See him, Kojak. Wow. <laughs> Kojak. They got Kojak. Because he a while ago. Mm -hmm. Kojak come to the railway and sit down, you know, with the car trunk and pack of money. I beg them to let, let, let me out, you know. Mm -hmm. So when I, when Beres said, come to my house, and I find him next year and I did an album with him. Then I, Jimmy Cliff checked me to work. I did two albums with Jimmy Cliff. But anyway, two weeks after I, I, I left the railway, I drive my own car go to, to my mother's house. Wow. You know what I mean? So um, uh, 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 there's another song, even the Jack Curl. When I found that girl, when me before me did that song, I made that country just because sometimes I walk away from the business, you know. It's it's the same thing over and over. I mean, apart from my friends, the music that excite me. So I just decided to quit for a while. I went to country with my brother, you know, and um, me and him just live on a par. And then uh, he had some animals. I mean, help, they they one day help him take care of the animal and get a car. And me and say hello. It was Jack Your well, Father Clive. Uh, Why you do something for me? And I produce two songs. I say, Oh, okay. He said, Tonight. He said, Tonight. And I said, Tough Gang. He said, Okay, well, send the songs to me. He said, I'm not a song. He said, I'm not a song, I'm not going to make really, me make music. So I need a song. He said, And he said, Yeah, no. He said, I wanted to come out singing to do something. It was a little, like, you know what I mean, just a little ear out. So I said, Okay. Let's go to the show. I come up with something, man. Why am I there with my brother? We just start vibes, the, the, not the melody, you know, but the, the bass and the vibes and the rhythm. And I was anxious, sing it on my phone, and I go to the studio and tell the musician, and then they did it. They did it. And Pooh Bear write the melody, and it's, it's history. Now, that one song got me so much, so much work wow. from then until now. Till today, I can No, I'm grateful for the call. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm grateful for the artist and the, and the success of it. But even though you might hear me say things about artists, I'm not thinking about artists. I, <laughs> I am one person who you don't ask me too much about artists. Mm -hmm. I love musicians oh. and, I, and I love engineers, people who make it happen. Mm -hmm. In my business, enough time me get up and work in and I walk outside, especially at night. I walk my people out there saying, no. Walk them, I mean, I can't see them. Even when I had eyes, mm -hmm. I couldn't see them. I said, oh, sorry, sir, sorry, so father. And when it, uh, six months or a year later, they become massive stars, you know. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm No, they, you know, so they, never, they never speak to one of the engineers who give them a bun, a money buy a bun, or a, a musician, or a producer. No, them is a different world they've gone into. Mm -hmm. I've seen it so much over and over, so I kind of retreat into yeah. just being a music person. Mm -hmm. And I try to be humble. My, my humbleness is not, like how I say, I start going to so my humbleness now. When I grow up, if you talk to me and my friends away, I go vex. I have a man here who, 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 who we're going to be working a few minutes. I know my family, I was very, very young. I know I'm very quiet and go and say, what you know, I fight, I used to fight whether I win or lose, you know. Mm -hmm. You know, I fight through my after fight. So that way they know my family, say I'm not humble. But nowadays, I don't have a choice because there's so much guns and things around, so I have to just behave myself. You know what I'm saying? Yes. <laughs> What would you say has been the, the highlight of your career so far? I know you have so many accomplishments, but give me one. Well, okay. I tell you, I am, I am a real, 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 real Jamaican, you know. I'm an African, you know. I mean, I'm a Jamaican, African. I have four African children, by the way. Okay? Mm -hmm. And I'm very proud of that. I'm a, my dad is a Rasta man. He felt good before him passed about that. But let me tell you, um, I, I think I've worked with the best in Jamaica. Uh, 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 mostly almost you know, and I've, I s could stand up and be respected you know what I mean by every one of them I mean I remember even there was people I wanted to record like even Ernie Rangling I don't know if you know about Ernie Rangling he's, he's one of the, the best ever he's still alive and I've worked with him one, once or twice and he was very happy and that made me feel that to me that is like great success no I've worked with um, I've always never wanted to do any other music more than reggae music. You know, I know I had the ability to, because I was taught. I mean, I read, write music, anything, and you know, it's, it's not much, you know what I'm saying? But I've worked with international artists, a few of them, who are massive and big and big stars. Mm -hmm. And they have given me the same respect, and, and they appreciate my thing, the same level. Now, to me, that's a massive achievement. 
Yes. Um, I remember I can tell you one particular thing. Which, um, me, I think the a major highlight for me and a major achievement. Mm -hmm. I, when I was very young there, you know, I was, as a young musician, I used to check people like Quincy Jones and all of his works and, and many, many great um, performers in America. And um, we, as, a, as, a, as an arranger, I, I consider myself, I always want to be an arranger and an, an instrumentalist. I use uh, the people like the horn sections, horn strings, and all these things, which are different from in Jamaica. You don't find much string players which are any good. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, I've never done any, and I listen to all of them, you know. But mm, okay, no, um, horns have been involved, you know, Dean Fraser, everybody, we come together, we do good enough, good enough, and the world accepts it. But so I remember doing a session on a Peter Tosh session in New York, and um, Peter Tosh, the Rolling Stones. Fly Peter Trust and go into New York because I wouldn't come to Jamaica to work. I was in New York committed to some a, a project. And and they came and we I recommended the student we were working. And I mean I did an arrangement for one I think the song with Gwen Guthrie and Peter Tosh, Nothing But Love, if anyone can remember that song. And um, I'd make an arrangement. So arrangement means these players know you have to write the thing, you know. Write it before they when I went to when I, I was in New York but they gave me a hotel room in the city. You know, the, everything I wanted to, to compose and arrange, make the arrangements. And when I turned up in the studio, I remember I, I took the parts to the musicians and I, what, what was first fantastic to me, and it's amazing every time. I am hearing this thing in my head, you know, me alone and on the piano doing this, you know, ba -da -ba -ba -da -da -ba. you know, me head, I'm here doing it. And then I give them the paper and walking back around to the control room, I hear the man them playing, everything was in my head, you know. And I never wow. say one thing to them. That was fantastic. But in that song now, I write a thing give up for the arms and the trumpeter was his name is John Faddis and he was the best in the, on the planet. Oh, wow. Yeah, I, I'm telling you, he was the best with trust me with whoever your name. Mm -hmm. And I, I write a part, give him money. When I walk up, I hear I heard him walking out of the studio to the control room to direct the session. I heard him fumble on it, mm -hmm. and, 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 so, and I me laugh when I come up here and Jeffrey Chung was engineer and Jeffrey Chung said, hmm. and it, the guy do it again and him fumble. And I'm, I, I, I kind of feel like a bad now. I just don't to, this is the best, you know. Mm -hmm. And when was there? And so anyway, when the time comes to record, normally you hear songs like Buckingham Palace, when you, every time I write, you just play it instantly. Bam, done. No, take this, fix this, did it, nothing. Just give them on the music play. One, two. I'm saying? Anyway, this thing was wicked. And Gwen was standing there with some, the backing vocalist, them, you know, they're the top New York people, you know. And, and, after about four times, I couldn't get it right. I just say, um, John, hold on. I mean, I, was, I, mean, I go around there now to change the part. And when she bought me up in the car, and I said, Kai, what are you doing? I'm saying, oh, I'm going to change it. I said, no, no, don't do that. This has never happened. This has never happened to him or them. Don't. They remember you as long as they live. And I, and I, and I was, no, I just said, hey. I said, don't change it. And I come back around and I realize that the guy practiced till he got it right. And you know something? I live in Manhattan, yeah, I'm in New York. And for years when I'm passing through many, I'm in the street, I'm in a club, I hear, hey Jamaica! And they say me now, calling to me now. <laughs> yes. Now to me, that's a great musical achievement. It's, yes. You know now, that's more than a platinum album to me. Definitely, yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. And uh, my final question to you, Clive, because this conversation could go on because I, I mean you have a wealth of knowledge and experience but what's your advice because the program it's the trailblazers we consider you a trailblazer so what's your advice to others who are in the industry right now whether musicians artists just anybody in the industry what what one advice would you want to leave and also to regular people out there who are on their journey of trying to be great whatever that is for them or trying to live out what their passion is I always tell young, a few young people when I have an opportunity. When I, I remember, I, I, I used to go to America a lot, all over. And there were some big, big, big billboards. You know, the massive ones you see. Yeah, man, like in Manhattan and yes, Times see, Square. Yeah, you, so. see, you see, think about in Jamaica, you see my Grace, this or mm -hmm. JPS, that. And in America, they have some big ones. And you know what I say? Uncle Sam wants you to practice. Oh, yes. In Jamaica, I wish they do that. They, the kids them don't need to know. And if you want something, I, I was going to do, when I started doing music, at least minimum 10 hours a day, you know, I'm, I'm playing. I'm practicing, playing or reading or studying. Every day for four, five, six, seven years. I was doing that, you know. Wow. So to achieve something, first of all, you have to 
we, we make money in the music business we make money too quick some of the money so and then you know i mean they just go i mean no they they, they are they are respected and rated you know, but them are, them are really, some of them are really good especially the artists them they just come make, then they disappear so you know if, if out of every 10 yeah, maybe two or less. Mm -hmm. But if they had studied and practiced and, uh, what do you call it? Uh, you like uh, the Hold. craft. Hold yeah. the craft. Yes, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. They will last for a lifetime. There are people I know who, see Berries, see Lime and Murray, see Freddie McGregor. They're from teenagers, they come in it and just like me. You know what I mean? And they're still doing it, but they practice. When they, they might laugh with everybody too. When they go home, or when they kind of lock up. They will, I, just, I pass some singers, I hear them play, I sing. Things, but what we in music without the scale. Do we me for the laddie do? Do we me for the laddie do? And oh, and, so, and some people, you may be neighbors in you see, but to me, that's great. What is it? Why my do? That's great. It, 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 it's gonna get better every day, every month, every year. Until one of one of his his practice that he do daily with knowledge is to pass it on. Yes. Hear Bob Marley sing yes. a song here. Pass it on. Yeah. That is what he does. Pass on the knowledge. Hey, this is Clive Hunt. You're watching the train basis. Some of our most prominent producers of them mm -hmm. in the industry tell Tony that he could not bust a female artist because wow. your feeling is one thing. Feeling publicly is, is, a, is a very hard thing. Father always said he was growing a brand new And I said I was all in my mouth, the lies were coming, and I put, I sat and I saw women on the TV just lying bluntly, just just like that. Please, the all media survey, when you look at the name Ron Michel, zero, what? zero, zero. And then they send back to say that they apologize. The lady up there never put in the number. No, seriously? Um, in terms then, of help, help for like, yeah, my mom was like, yeah, my mom was a help for that then and stuff. To be honest, I was just excited enough you know, to play if I was finished. I did it. I, I made my move into entrepreneurship at 40. What, you know, last comments would you want to share with you? You have your core values. You do the right things. It'll fall in place for you. Special thanks to our current sponsors, Stars Publicity and DG's Nutrition and Wellness Center. If you're interested in being a sponsor, just send an email 